Statistics show close to 33,000 Americans were victims of gun-related deaths in 2011. Interestingly, since 1950, every public mass shooting with the exception of just one in the U.S. has occurred in a place where civilians are banned from carrying firearms. Statistics also show average deaths in a shooting rampage when stopped by police is 14.3. But the average deaths in a shooting rampage when stopped by civilians is 2.3. The fact is that gun control laws don't stop criminals. They only infringe on the rights of the law abiding. Let's take a look at what anti-gun advocates think. What's the efficacy of, pa of banning these magazine clips? I will tell you, these, these, this is, these are um, ammunition. They're bullets. Clearly, some lawmakers need to get educated on what magazines and clips are. Pistols are different. You have to pull the trigger each time. An assault weapon, you basically hold it, goes... Blah, blah, blah. No, those are fully automatic weapons. Okay. Another ignorant lawmaker. It is possible for us to create common sense gun safety measures that respect the traditions of gun ownership in this country and hunters and sportsmen, but also make sure that we don't have another 20 children in a classroom gunned down by a semi-automatic weapon, by a fully automatic weapon in that case, sadly. The president was wrong. The rifle was semi-automatic, not automatic. We're gonna do is going to fundamentally alter or eliminate the possibility of another mass shooting or guarantee that we will bring uh, um, gun deaths down to a thousand a year from, uh, from what it is now. Even the vice president admits that more laws won't reduce gun-related deaths. The information in the NICS or background check system is outdated. The NRA suggests fixing and updating the current system. We've been trying for 20 years and the NRA is up on the hill right now trying to get this existing system on retail dealers to work. But here's what they want to do. They want to take this current mess of a system and expand it now to 100 million law-abiding gun owners. Hopefully at least get the records of those adjudicated mentally incompetent and dangerous into the check system that applies on dealers. Most of the states still do not even do that. The Justice Department surveyed more than 18,000 state and federal convicts which revealed the truth about where criminals get guns. 39.6% of criminals obtained a gun from a friend or family member. 39.2% of criminals obtained a gun on the street from an illegal source. 0.7% of criminals purchased a gun at a gun show. 1% of criminals purchased a gun at a flea market. And 3.8% of criminals purchased a gun from a pawn shop, while 8.3% of criminals bought their guns from retail outlets. A good example is Adam Lanza, who stole his mother's legally owned guns and shot her dead before murdering 20 children and six staff members at Sandy Hook. Adam Lanza, the shooters in Aurora, the shooters in Newtown, they're unrecognizable. They're not going to be in the system. Who is going to be in the system? You and me. The regulations in Mexico is categorized as restrictive, yet Mexico has a homicide rate of 9.97 per capita and is ranked 40 cent in gun ownership globally with an average of 15 firearms per 100 people. In contrast, the U.S. is ranked number one in gun ownership with an average of 88 firearms per 100 people, yet the homicide by firearm rate in the U.S. is only 2.97 per 100 people. This data shows that more gun control will not reduce criminals from committing gun-related violent crimes but it will affect legal and law-abiding citizens' Second Amendment rights. Current and proposed changes to gun laws are in violation of all Americans' Second Amendment rights protected by the Constitution. In fact, there are now 228 county sheriffs across the nation and a number of sheriff associations that have come out vowing to defend the Constitution. In order to do that, they say they will not enforce any federal law that violates the Second Amendment rights of the people in their counties. Even county sheriffs nationwide agree the proposed changes to gun control laws begin to infringe upon law-abiding citizens' rights. Why, why is it that they think it's okay to create laws that prevent law-abiding citizens from carrying firearms in certain locations when it's already been demonstrated and proven a number of times that people who don't obey the law and are hell-bent on violating the law or creating damage or shooting a lot of people aren't going to obey the law in the first place?
When a law is written that violates the Constitution, it is an invalid law. The precedent set by Norton v. Shelby County in 1886 proves an unconstitutional act is not law. Semi-automatic weapons are a part of a present-day well-regulated militia and should not be banned from law-abiding citizens that have the right to bear arms. In 2008, the Supreme Court ruled that the right to bear arms is not contingent on military membership. And in 1939, they ruled that military-style weapons are protected by the Second Amendment. The Supreme Court upheld the Second Amendment. Sheriffs nationwide support the Second Amendment. The American people need the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is a right given by the Constitution to all Americans and should not be limited or infringed upon by any state or federal law. Law-abiding citizens should be allowed to determine where and when to carry under the provision of the Second Amendment. The NICS must be updated and revised to include all felons and all mentally unstable. Lastly, Americans must take responsibility and shift away from a culture of violence and more towards a culture that emphasizes morals. Want to learn more and get educated? Visit NRA.org, NSSF.org, or your local gun range.